What could possibly keep a stay-at-home wife so busy? My husband scoffed as he looked down on me, a full-time housewife. Matching his tune, my mother-in-law, Helen, chuckled. You're just a parasite, mocking me. It wasn't just her who suddenly started freeloading at our place. I was also thrust into taking care of my grandmother-in-law with dementia without so much as a thank you. Instead, everything I did was met with complaints, even though I was working hard at raising our daughter. And they call me a parasite? Bring it on. I'll show them their place. My name is Sherry. Every Valentine's, I treat myself to some chocolate, but this year, overindulging led to some serious skin breakouts at the age of 40. It's getting harder to recover from breakouts every year, you know? Or should I take acne as a sign of youth? <laughs> Not really, I guess. Back in my 30s when my skin was still somewhat supple, Dwight came home from work one day with his mother and grandmother in tow and announced, We've decided to all live here together from now on. The shock on my face was indescribable. What do you mean? I haven't heard anything about this. I snapped at my husband. Dwight replied, Mom broke her hand, you see? Glancing at his mother's right hand. She lifted her bandaged hand and laughed carelessly. Silly me. You know mom has been taking care of grandma with dementia, right? He added. Yeah, I know, but... I began to feel a sense of dread as I glanced at Helen, who confidently stated, With this hand, I can't possibly take care of her. Well, unlike you, I can handle just about anything smoothly. But given my age and this injury, I can't be expected to do the caregiving, you know what I mean? She said with a smirk. Sighing, I thought about how subtly she implied I was incompetent. I absolutely detest this about her. Helen used to claim she was a career woman who led various successful projects in a major corporation. But in reality, her job was mainly making copies, a placeholder until she got married. She would leave work at 5 p.m. claiming her efficiency was the reason, when it was actually because there were no copies to make by then. Meanwhile, I'm a vocational school graduate and former beautician, mocked by Helen for choosing a path only an idiot would take. And when I quit my job to prioritize my baby, she lectured me. I managed to balance work and parenting. If my jaw was just making copies and leaving at 5 p.m., I could balance work and parenting too. As much as it irritated me, I just smiled and said, Is that so? I've been avoiding visits to Dwight's family home, citing that unfamiliar environments and places could make our daughter sick. Dwight understood, and she didn't insist, happy with just him visiting. We maintained a comfortable distance from her until the topic of living together came up. I was overwhelmed. Surely, with her dominant hand injured, Helen couldn't care for her mother with dementia. It made sense that they needed our support. I get it, really. But why didn't he consult me before bringing them home, knowing how I felt about Helen? I felt betrayed. Dwight then reasoned. Since you're a full-time housewife, you can take care of Grandma, right? Yes, I was a full-time housewife, but I was raising our two-year-old daughter practically by myself. Despite that, I couldn't say no when his mother and grandmother showed up with their bags expecting to move in. I reluctantly agreed to take on the caregiving role, thinking it would be temporary until Helen's injury healed. However, even after her recovery, Helen showed no signs of leaving and kept leaving all the caregiving responsibilities to me. She's her mother, not mine for God's sake. If your hand is okay, please help with the caregiving, I requested gently. I have work, she refused. Her job was just a part-time gig at a supermarket working twice a week from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Hardly an excuse to avoid caregiving responsibilities. And she can't use her work as an excuse because she had chosen the schedule herself to make sure she had enough time to care for her mother. She also claimed her boss valued her as an essential part of the company, 
a laughable statement for someone with her part-time schedule. It was clear she was just boasting. Yet, she frequently reminded me, Unlike you, who quit your job as soon as you got pregnant, I'm indispensable at work. I wish I could retire, but they just can't let me go because of my excellence. She'd say with a grin. I so wanted to retort sarcastically about her being a highly skilled shelf stalker with a college degree, but I held my tongue. For all her talk of being a career woman, her incompetence was obvious in our daily life. She often misheard phone calls, couldn't operate the DVD player, and struggled with the TV remote, likely clueless about computers and even unaware of what YouTube is. She hardly did anything around the house, leaving clothes out and not cleaning up after herself. Utterly inconsiderate. Listening to her, you never guess she was the capable person she claimed to be. Considering she attended the only private women's college in her rural hometown, I suspect she was admitted because the school was desperate for students. So there I was, increasingly burdened by my growing resentment towards Helen. Dwight, for his part, seemed indifferent to her extended stay and my discomfort, brushing off my concerns with, It's fine, we can all live together. Worse, he began to criticize me for not being welcoming enough to his mother, turning colder as if I was the problem. I used to love him for his kindness, but living with his mother and grandmother, he became pampered and indulgent. They encouraged his daily heavy drinking under the guise of freedom, a far cry from the two drinks a day we had agreed on. Helen's coddling shifted his affections towards her, painting me as the nagging wife who couldn't sympathize with his feelings. She convinced Dwight that it was natural for a wife to care for her husband and his mother, turning him lazy to the point where he wouldn't even prepare his clothes after the shower, demanding I do it instead. Just like Helen, he left messes everywhere, refusing to clean up by insisting, Cleaning is your job, isn't it? His increased drinking led to a shorter temper, making any conversation with them fraught and negatively impacting our daughter's upbringing, which I tried to mitigate by avoiding conflicts, leaving most of my grievances unvoiced. This only emboldened him further, cementing his role as an unbearable traditional husband. All this stress was Helen's doing. As for the grandmother, her dementia had progressed since we last saw her, becoming more aggressive and prone to outbursts. There were times she hit me hard on the head with her fist. Yet Dwight and Helen would just laugh it off, saying, It's your fault for upsetting her. You're just bad at handling things nearly bringing me to tears with frustration. Even though I'm stretched thin with childcare and caregiving, Helen has the nerve to ask, I want to watch Korean drama, so rent some DVDs for me. As if I have the time to go out and rent her stupid DVDs when even getting enough sleep has become a luxury. But if I were to express how unreasonable her requests are, she'd get mad and tattle to Dwight saying, your wife is being mean to me. And then I get lectured by my husband, with nobody willing to listen or understand my side of things. How did things get to this point? I've been feeling increasingly down. I've hit my limit, physically and emotionally. One day, after being hit by Grandma, Dwight scolded me. Why do you always upset Grandma? You really don't know how to handle things. All I did was wipe her mouth after she spilled her food. She snapped saying, don't touch me at first. So when I stopped, she then complained. Wipe my mouth, it's disgusting. And hit me. I don't think my lack of skill is the issue here. Dwight, if you're going to complain so much, why don't you take over the caregiving? It's not like you're doing anything else. She's your grandmother after all. I shouldn't even be responsible for her care in the first place. I argued. Are you stupid? There's no way I could take on the caregiving. I'm busy as hell. He retorted. I'm busy too. I exclaimed through tears, only to be met with his derisive snort. <laughs> busy? 
What could possibly keep a stay-at-home wife so busy? Before I could respond, Helen interjected with a laugh. You're just a parasite. A parasite? Me? I manage childcare, household chores, and caregiving, keeping them comfortably housed, and I'm the parasite? That's unforgivable. Fine. I quit being a wife and a daughter-in-law as of today. I declared. Dwight and Helen looked baffled by my statement. You're quitting being a wife? Planning to divorce? As if you could. He scoffed. Without batting an eye, I calmly stated, I'm leaving you. What the? Ignoring his bewildered expression, I opened a cabinet behind me and slammed some documents down on the desk. Here's the divorce papers. Sign them, please. Are you serious? He stared at the divorce papers and then at me, his face turning pale. Helen tried to maintain her composure, her voice quivering. She can't be serious. What's wrong, Helen? Scared of losing your precious caregiver? I taunted. Uh, no, it's not that. You can't possibly think of a divorce as feasible. How do you plan to survive without any money? Helen challenged. I can't believe you would say that. I shot back. Dwight, sensing the gravity of the situation, warned Helen. Stop, Mom. Don't say anything anymore to her. Helen, did you know this house is mine? I revealed. What? Helen was stunned while Dwight held his head in his hands. Yes, actually, I inherited this land and house from my late grandfather, and my husband and I renovated it to live there. Uh, I thought you said my son bought this house. Yes, we told you that at Dwight's request. What do you mean? You're the type who thinks a man is worthless if he lives in a house registered in his wife's name, right? Oh, well, yes, of course. A man should be the breadwinner and provide a home or two. That's why Dwight never told you the truth, I explained. Huh? When we found out we were expecting, we decided to leave our apartment life behind and move into a house. That same year, my grandfather passed away, leaving me his land and house. We agreed it was the perfect solution, but Dwight hesitated, saying, My mom's going to judge me if we lived in a house that's under your name. You see, Helen holds outdated views on gender roles, believing men should financially support women. So, when she hears modern couples splitting bills on dates, she's quick to criticize. That's not very manly. Meanwhile, she also claims to hold progressive views, arguing that women should be independent and not rely on men. The contradiction was clear. If Dwight hadn't bought our home and we lived in one registered in my name, she'd belittle him. You should buy your own house with your own money, she'd likely say. We would be the ones to live in the house, but we knew it would be a source of unnecessary comments. To avoid such drama, we decided to pretend Dwight bought the house. Learning the truth, Helen lamented. I didn't raise my son to be so unmanly. And looked at her son with disdain. Dwight, feeling guilty, couldn't meet our eyes. If my relationship with them had been better... I might have defended him against such outdated thinking, but not this time. So, will you all please leave the house? I asked with a smile, causing Dwight and Helen to stiffen. We, Sherry, I get why mom and grandma should leave, but I'm your husband and we're not divorced. He protested, unwilling to leave. If he were to be kicked out, his only options would be renting somewhere or moving back to his parents the latter being more practical but less appealing due to the poor public transport and his lack of a car. I get it. Helen, too, seemed reluctant to leave, likely dreading the return to caregiving for her mother. Think it over, Sherry, she suggested. No, you're leaving. I insisted, dragging their belongings out to the yard. What, what do you think you're doing? 
She panicked. It doesn't make sense to keep someone else's stuff in my house. I'm decluttering. Despite their protest, I continued to move their things outside. Eventually, I even pushed Dwight out onto the lawn. Though I didn't physically force Helen or Grandma out, it ended up being quite the scuffle to get them outside. As I quietly closed the window, Dwight and Helen banged on it, demanding to be let back in. Amidst the chaos, Grandma, confused by the situation, kept yelling, Play with me! Hitting and kicking Dwight and Helen. Unable to calm Grandma down, they took the brunt of her frustration. Sherry, don't just watch! Help me! Helen pleaded for my help. Dwight did the same, begging, Please, stop Grandma! But I just smiled and watched the scene unfold without opening the window. Ouch! Oh, come on! Don't just watch! Help me! She screamed. Before I knew it, Grandma had mounted Helen and was hitting her on the forehead. Dwight, not wanting to get involved, just watched from a distance, trembling. You were once a skilled businesswoman, right, Helen? If you were so great at your job, surely you can think of a way to resolve this mess. I teased. How dare you? Or are you like me and not good at handling things well? Helen looked at me with a look of despair and shouted, I'm sorry! No wonder she was desperate. There were gardening tools like a shovel and a sickle nearby. Anything could happen. But if anything did, it would just be an unfortunate accident. I'm not to blame. If you're as capable as you say, I'm sure you can figure it out. I said with a smile, then closed the curtain. I thought about calling an ambulance if things got worse, but Helen ended up scolding Dwight and somehow managed to stop Grandma's rampage. They must have realized I was no longer an option for them. Afterward, they didn't ask to come back, but managed to get Grandma into a taxi and went back to their own home. Eventually, Dwight and I got divorced without any issues. Dwight, having failed to protect his mother from Grandma that day, has been at odds with her ever since. Incredibly, Helen demanded, If you want to stay here, you take care of Grandma. The two who didn't want to take care of her ended up pushing the responsibility onto each other, and eventually, Dwight had to put Grandma in a nursing home at his own expense. She even said to him, You cover the expense like a man. This only added fuel to their strained relationship, leading to their current estrangement. As for me, Dwight still sends messages of regret and pleas for reconciliation, wanting to live with their daughter again. But I have no intention of accepting, firmly stating, Our relationship is only about child support now. That incident exposed his indecisiveness and tendency to be swayed by others into playing the domineering husband, something I'm no longer willing to deal with. No matter what, there's no going back. Being a divorced stay-at-home mom was tough at first, but with help from my parents, I've started working as a beautician again. As long as I have these skills, I won't struggle to make a living. I don't need him to live a strong and independent life. Besides, my daughter and I have welcomed a new family member, leaving no room for him in our home. Got a new husband, you ask? Indeed. He has triangular ears, a mustache, and meows. Isn't he adorable? Despite having me, he seemed to have an affair with the cat next door, and they're expecting kittens soon. They're not my children, but since they're his, I'll take responsibility and raise them. So my daughter and I, along with our beloved cats and their upcoming litter, will continue weaving a life full of joy and laughter. Now, I need to make some homemade treats for the cats. Let's boil some chicken. <laughs>